the meeting to order. We are a quorum. We're missing Jerry, Malka, and Mike. Mike Tig. Um, well, let's proceed. Public comments on items not on the agenda. Seeing none, we'll move to the consent calendar. The mi minutes from our last meeting. Two sets. Well, unless Any there are corrections, I would move to uh, approve. Both sets of minutes? Uh, we have a set from the joint BPAC committee that arrived late. I did not get the joint BPAC. You got it in your email because I, Yvonne sent it. I, I missed it. Somebody have a copy? So, yeah, right there. Okay, thank you. Do. Well, while you're looking at that, yeah. I will move that we approve the minutes of the regular meeting of September 18th. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously for those of us here. Quick look at the BPAC one. Hmm. Yes? Okay. Yep. I move that we approve the minutes that of the joint meeting with BPAC that was on October 2nd. I'll second that as well. All in favor, say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Which brings us to the first matter on the agenda, 14B09. David, would you like to update us? Thank you. This is a landscape variance application for the uh, property at 4700 El Camino Real. Uh, you'll Recall, this is this property recently received an entitlement for adding on to the existing building for the new BevMo use. And as part of their redevelopment of the site, uh, they had to uh, eliminate two parking spaces in the existing parking lot in the front yard to meet the city's 50% um, minimum landscape requirements for the front yard along El Camino Real. Uh, this is a, uh, <clears throat> and despite adding those, uh, those landscape areas, uh, uh, they still met the city's parking regulations for the use, and um, the project was, was approved in that form. Um, so following, following that entitlement, though, they've been considering um, their desire for parking there and have applied to basically keep the existing parking configuration the way it is and um, put those two parking spaces back in and reduce the landscape area. Uh, on the site plan here, the two parking spaces in question are where the green arrow is. Uh, green arrows are. Ah, there they are. Uh, <clears throat> And other than that, the, the landscape plan remains exactly the same. That so, was so those are the two that are, are proposed going back in? That's right. Okay. Those would be the new spaces. And do we have a diagram of the prior approved well, about those? Well, just going to be those things turned into landscape. I, I, I should, yeah. Yes, I don't have, Here. Didn't okay. have that one on, but we have the plans in your packet. You know, okay, all right. The yeah, approved just, site plan, but yeah. really uh, it was, there was landscape extensions into those parking Spaces. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see. I see it on the on the other diagram. I just and, wanted to. And just for reference, um, I mean that's this is another copy of the landscape plan, and they're they're uh, identifying here the screening. Uh, there's a, a sedge grass that's proposed in the along the parking area, which is um, which is pretty good for screening cars. It doesn't get that tall. It's about two to three feet tall. So. Um, I got some questions when you're done. Okay, and then uh, just for your information, I have the aerial photo. I know I know you're familiar with the site, but in case you want to want to reference it, uh, this is the existing parking lot there uh, for the building. And um, so, are they? Have they? How many parking spaces are in the present lot now? Um, 
In other words, the approved plan, was it um, adding parking spaces or just keeping the existing parking spaces? The, the approved plan took away parking spaces in the front yard. Okay. And I'm sorry, I don't have the exact okay. numbers I just, there. I, I, um, you know, more than meets the parking regulations, but they have a desire for more parking. And so, so we were looking at this and saying, well, there is an opportunity to meet the city's landscape regulations. Uh, this, when the city changed its code uh, uh, a few years ago to require to go from a 50-foot front yard setback to a 25-foot front yard setback, we also required 50% uh, of that to be landscaped. And, and, and we've, been, we've been following that with a new development. Uh, and so, so we, we appreciate that the applicant mm -hmm. met that standard with the, with the addition that was approved to this, to this property. And so we, you know, seeing that it can, it can be designed to meet the code, it meets our parking regulations, uh, we didn't, you know, despite that it is essentially an existing condition they want to want to honor now, uh, we just felt that we, as staff, could not make the findings to support granting a variance. So, um, unfortunately, we're recommending against, against granting it. So, that's my staff report, and I would be happy to answer any questions. I have a couple questions. So, David, what is the... Um, in, in your opinion, the stated reason for wanting the two additional spaces? Well, I, I think, um, and, and I'm sure the applicant will speak to this, but my, my understanding is that, uh, that there is a desire for more. They feel that they would like more spaces because there are peak times when they, uh, you know, such as the holiday season, where they... Um, have a need for more parking they feel and and with most uses they tend to have peaks and our parking requirements don't require the parking supply to, to, to be designed to the peak it's somewhat less than that and and I think the extensive parking requirements for for this kind of retail use kind of reflect that idea and they recognize as a retailer that if they can have a little more parking it's beneficial to them as a retailer, uh, it's beneficial to the customers uh, because these are, you know, primarily the customer spaces out in the front, and you know, that ultimately benefits the city as well because you know more people shopping there, there's more sales tax. So, so yeah, can you do with questions? I've got one. Um, and it just based on what's there now, do you think that the current landscaping, even though it doesn't technically meet the requirement, do you think it's adequate? It, it's pretty good. I think I, I would recommend if we're granting a variance that they adjust the landscaping a little bit to, to screen the cars a little better. Um, the sedge grass, I'll show you a picture of it. In this, in this diagram, the, the green circles are the main screening plants for the parking spaces along the front. And this is an example of the sedge, uh, California gray rush grass. And it's it's nice. It's actually it's very it's very sort of architectural. It grows in clumps, and this building has very contemporary feel to it. Their landscape plan is very very in keeping with the architecture. And, and you know, I didn't we didn't raise this as an issue before at all. I just was thinking that um, if we're going to diminish the landscape area, that maybe we should at least consider. Um, looking at, at, at maybe a different choice there to, to screen the cars a little better. Um, you know, not hide the building per se, but just the whole intent of this is for generous and inviting landscaping. And that's the, the design finding that the building and, and landscape plan was approved with. And, and then there's also a, a requirement to buffer parking areas and screen those from the public view. And so I thought, well, there's an opportunity there if you, you know, should you end up supporting this variance, then, then I would ask that you consider um, consider that landscape. Okay. So, David, if we cannot find um, uh, uh, the basis for a variance, is there any other way to allow the applicant 
to get uh, additional parking. Um. O only, only with a, 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 I'd say, a drastic change to the front yard circulation, and they could create a dead end parking lot, mm -hmm. close off one of those. I, I, right, but, I wouldn't recommend that. But can you put in, have the applicant put in, um, porous um, hardscape with you know, plants underneath. Um, that you know, we've seen that on certain driveways and other applications. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that is that something that would work? Well, in in some ways, I mean, they they've employed the I think the the one approach we have come up with, and that's uh, the parking spaces allow for an overhang, and and so these parking spaces are measured to the curb. Um, but the cars can overhang that, and so that's a sort of double duty in that overhang area with the low landscaping. But I think the only other way would be to close off this Sherwood, um, the Sherwood driveway and add lands, or I mean, sorry, the, the El Camino driveway, because that's in the 25 foot front yard, and that really wouldn't be a beneficial circulation mm -hmm. pattern here. This is a commercial thoroughfare, and and you know it's it's convenient to have the access on on Sherwood, but it's it's better on mm -hmm. on El Camino, and certainly having a, uh, you know not having a dead end is also very beneficial. Okay, there. thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. So they are they are having to redo their front uh, parking in general. In order to make their plan work, they're not. They're not adapt. The question is: Are they adapting the existing uh, parking area at all? Would they have to adapt the parking area at all to meet our parking requirement? Not our landscape requirement, but the parking requirement. I mean, they. they That's a hard question because the the existing parking lot would meet the parking needs. But not but, the but not the landscape needs. Got that. So. But but that was one of the questions. Yeah. Um and there's no uh I think what John was asking about if there was a way of looking at this where they could provide some public benefit which would allow them to have a developer incentive mm -hmm. that would then allow them to ask for a variance. Well, I mean, we can. Um, I mean, one of the things that, that I've been thinking about as we've been talking uh, is is what's this notion of generous and inviting landscape, and and is it all softscape? No. Uh, you 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 can have paved areas, plazas, and as so forth as part of a landscape. As part of a landscape. I don't know. That approach. was the intent. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but. Perhaps uh, more enhanced paving in the driveways or something, or uh, for the walkway going. Um, well, there, there wasn't there a cost issue on on moving um, uh, a utility um, big utility box? Well, at the corner, at the corner, there is a there is a fiber optic utility box right. there, and. And that, so that was an issue. Redoing that ramp, you know, we're going to do our best there and, and right. scoot it as much as we can. But that's a constraint. We can't move that. Well, you can move it. It's expensive, right? E extremely. Okay. I, I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm. In the spirit and I don't of know the these questions, I'm trying to understand if there's any public benefit Benefits. that um, this project could deliver. Which would Warren. which would provide a development incentive that we could be looking at. Yeah, and I, and I appreciate that idea, uh, but unfortunately, in this context of a variance, you have to make a finding where the strict application of the of the zoning code, in this case, this landscape requirement, deprives of development privilege 
uh, of this property owner that other similar properties maintain. And so, you know, I think if I'm hearing the applicant, their their argument is, well, we, um, we you know, property essentially was developed prior to those the, these regulations, and they were merely adding on. And can't we just honor mm. that prior? Grandfather it in. Mm -hmm. And so, um, if you you know, certainly if you felt that that was uh, inappropriate finding along those. But that's not a variance. Well, but that's for the discussion. Okay. This is All right. I, so I, I'm, I'm asking that so as you, a question. So to grant a variance, is that you have a variance? To make three findings. You, you have, have to, to meet the state findings. It's not okay. ours. You, you have to find that it's consistent with the zoning code objectives, which which here uh, doesn't cause a traffic problem. It's it's appropriate sort of land use planning. Um, it's consistent with the area. Uh, the second finding is that it doesn't uh, affect. Uh, a personal oh, or a property right, yeah. and, and clearly this this wouldn't affect that. It's the third and, one. And and the third finding is that there's a special circumstance that um, about the property and the private development privilege, um, and so here, you know, I think I think what what I'm hearing from them is the surroundings of the pre-existing long-standing development. Um, I think in their mind support and leaving it alone in terms and, and it's your call it's, it's your call we we thought about it and we we you know perhaps are taking a, a conservative perspective but we we couldn't come to those findings mm -hmm. or that particular one the other two findings we could make so in terms of the landscape requirement it it only applies to the front yard is there any requirement I mean because this is a corner lot the side, you know, is very, um, it's in fact longer and, and, and seen more, although not on El Camino. Is there any requirement as to landscaping on this Sherwood portion? There, there is, uh, in terms of um, the parking lot in the back has to be screened. So they've, they've done that with the the landscape at the back driveway uh, shoulders there um, they've actually gone beyond That's the code uh, in in the back there's uh, there's a screening in the rear uh, adjacent the non-conforming residents now our code requires that if you are adjacent to a residential property in zone a zoned residential property you have to provide a landscape buffer and that's that there isn't that requirement it's here because technically it's an office it's a it's a it's a commercial property but it has happens to have a non-conforming residence so in that sense they are providing more landscape so than, that, that than is required that, so, so that was the question i had can we argue that though they may be 10 percent less in the front they are overcompensating on the entire perimeter and also because there is some landscaping along the side yeah. as well as in the rear and then maybe we encourage maybe even a green wall somewhere in the back or somewhere that goes above and beyond so it ends up being a more landscape project without being sticklers on the specific exact location in the 25 mm -hmm. foot setback yeah, I think I think along those lines, um, you, you certainly could find that 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 um, is it accurate? So, so David, that's, that'd um, be your call. I think we should hear so, from the applicant. So, well, before we hear from the applicant, David, the you know, if there was trellising and live growth in the front, that would be vertical and presumably horizontal. Is could that be counted to the fifty percent? Wait a minute. What are you? You're not allowed to build in the front setback. There's a twenty-five foot setback, and I don't believe you can put a structure taller than six. Are you talking about along the? Building? No, we can do an entry arbor. An arbor. There's, a, there's an exception sort. that allows arbors over walkways. Ah, uh, but Eight not feet. but not over parking spaces. So there is a sense a walkway in the middle. 
here. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that's there. It's not marked there, but it's uh, in between the two trees on El Camino. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a sort of a double duty. That's a handicap access and a, a way to get to the sidewalk. Um, I mean, there there could be a the the the. the that exception, though, is geared towards a trellis-type structure, which is in their vernacular, uh, but it's limited to uh, an eight-foot height, five-foot uh, width. Five-foot width is the problem. And and okay. and a three-foot depth. <laughs> and so you you know you could do something to sort of call out that that pedestrian way, mm -hmm. if you will. <clears throat> What you're that, saying that, enhance more about it, that, and that's that's where I was going in terms of maybe enhancing the driveway approaches or something like that. Right. And but that technically it. would add to the front landscape mm -hmm. percentage. Yes, it, no. Um, it, it's an area requirement, so okay. we're only looking in the the two dimensions. Okay, I'm simply asking. Yeah. So. Um, so that's why I was thinking, well, if there's enhanced paving, that could be considered landscape, perhaps. And, and, uh, and we've, we've done this downtown where we've let people do enhanced paving and of our public sidewalks even, um, but, but certainly on their what private is, What does enhanced paving mean? I don't know. It's decorative concrete or pavers or something okay. like that. Um, OK. Okay, let's hear from the applicant. Well, we have our full discussion here. Okay. Let's. Good evening. My name is Greg Endem. I represent Bebmo, the applicant. Um, you know, this, this idea was somewhat planted at the city council meeting. Um, one of the council members actually wanted to condition my approval that I come back with a variance request to... Um, to add parking and the, the, the council member was informed by the city attorney that that was not appropriate and so um, that didn't go anywhere but um, of the people that spoke and there was only one at the city council meeting uh, who supported my application the only thing she did say is boy I'd love to have more parking and while we understand that um, we meet the extensive retail parking definition um, as, as David alluded to, there are times in our business um, during the holidays and during peak times that parking is at a premium. Having two more spaces, and by the way, right now there are 23 spaces existing on the site. That is what is in t no, just in the front. Only in the front. That's what is there today. Um, our approved plan that went through the process has 17, and this would bring it to 19. Um, so uh, the, the two spaces we're talking about, 300 square feet of landscaping is what this difference boils down to. Um, we know that with the peak times during the holidays, during certain holidays, um, people are going to be sitting there idling. They're not going to find parking. Um, it's, yes, it's very selfish. We're going to do more sales because we have more parking. But at the same time, we're going to serve the residents more conveniently. And they're not going to drive down the street to the Sunnyvale store or go to Safeway across the street. That's, that's the reality of having more convenient parking. Um, the, um, I talked to our landscape architect. Um, he indicated, and, and this is contrary to what David stated, and I'm, it, you know, maybe both are right, that the screening in the front was going to be Fortnite lilies, uh, not the grass that was shown. Either way, uh, we have no problem beefing up the landscaping. I'm not here to try to strip the landscaping out of the plan and end up with bare concrete and a, and a building. Uh, we want to see a good balance and we want an inviting uh, facility. Um, the condition that was noted in the staff report that if it was approved that we uh, increase or, or build up the front, we have no problem with coming up with a design that either has whether it's trellis or further landscaping. We're very flexible in that. We're just trying to make a very functional site for our customer. Um, the two spaces that we would um, recoup from landscaping, our landscape architect tells us it saves 5,000 gallons a year in irrigation. Um, with the drought and everything else that we're seeing, 
um, you know, that's a, that's a consideration I think that should be called out that, you know, this is even with drought tolerant plants, you're still saving 2,500 gallons of space by making them parking rather than uh, landscaping. Uh, the employees are already restricted from not parking in front. I don't remember if that was a condition here, but it was, I think, recited at the council hearing and we're very supportive of that. And I think that's in the approval. There won't be any employee parking in the front. Um, it is it is for our customers um, and uh, and that includes there won't be any uh, supplier or other non customer parking in the front that we can enforce um, paver stones uh, in the walkway that comes from the street and cuts across if there's a way to incorporate some type of landscape paver stones we're very open to that as well um, I don't know the specifics about it meeting ADA and I would have to look into that but um, we have a lot of flexibility in design. We're just trying to fine tune the, the elements of the site to really give the best presentation we can. So um, I don't have anything else. I'm here to answer any questions or um, that's about it. Do you, how, how often do you think you need the additional parking spaces? Well, I will tell you from November 15th to, to January 1st, um, we do a lot of business and so there's going to be a high percentage of that time during the holidays that lots going to be full I guarantee it during the rest of the year you know it's you know, it's probably a half dozen holidays that people celebrate like Cinco de Mayo and St. Patrick's Day that we consider the drinking holidays as opposed to Thanksgiving which are eating holidays um, and and then there's the peak time that I think we talked about at, at the first hearing, which is we see our peak hours at about four to five on Fridays and about two to three, three to four on Saturdays. And based on the size of the building, based on the Mountain View store, which we're moving right across the street, so we know the traffic patterns and the customer visits, we see about 32 to 39 customers per hour. Now, you know, we can assume they all drive. We know that there's a small percentage that walk or bike or do other things. But if you assume they all drive, um, the lot, if they all come evenly spaced, it works out fine. But we don't control that. And we know there'll be some, there'll be some peak time there. And having people idling, um, you know, that's not a preference. It's not convenient. We looked at this project uh, after we, we talked to David and we made our variance application. We looked and said, what if we scrape the building and start from scratch? And how, how can we make the site better? And if you, move the, if you put the building up on front, which is probably the preferred design style, and you have the storefront facing, which would be down Sherwood, I don't know what direction that is, um, you end up most likely losing the driveway cut on El Camino. So you have one driveway cut on Sherwood, pretty much entering a dead end driveway. The area is not wide enough to have three aisles of parking. So you still only end up with an aisle of parking each way. And you have a big area in the center that kind of becomes wasted. And it's dead end. So the circulation is very difficult. From a retail perspective, no one sees my storefront because Sherwood doesn't have that much traffic. So even if we wanted to start from scratch, we couldn't come up with something that would be acceptable and that would work probably for us or for the city. So taking this existing facility, you know, taking the 23 spaces, we understand there's some change in the code. We're not, we're not trying to go back to the 60s and, and say we, we can't have any change, but to go from 23 to 17 is pretty drastic and we're just, we're asking for the two additional spaces. So. It, it sounded like, can you put the screen down so I can see David? It sounded like David, um, suggested a solution where he he said enhanced paving can be considered landscape and you know looking at the entry and exit along the El Camino path that 20 foot wide by 25 foot deep is about 500 square feet so if that is that a, would, would that be something you would be open to doing you're, enhanced paving you're talking at each of the driveway cuts is that what I, I just want to understand what your the concept is well only one of them is in was is within the 25 foot setback ah oh okay i understand so the on one, the el camino frontage right um yeah are you giving him a solution 
I'm asking if he's open. I'm very open. He said he's open to, to anything. That. I am. That I mean, we looked. We considered could we pave the whole lot with landscape pavers, and it just economically and the water and all those things. I, I think I was creating more problems for myself than I was solving. But to do to continue the landscaping across the driveway cut, easy. Questions for the applicant? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm opening it up for discussion. Well, uh, Madam Chair, may I just? Yes. Uh, I apologize. The applicant is correct. The um, the landscape plan is is their idea was to use the Fortnite lilies, which is the front row of screening against the sidewalk. Okay. Um, the ones in green there. They, they're also about a three foot clumping three foot they have nice flowers and then the grass that I was talking about is behind that so it's two sort of three foot um, buffer. tall <clears throat> buffer areas okay pick me pick me I would like to start All right, to the <laughs> okay so understanding the concept of why the applicant wants it I have great difficulty making the third finding. In fact, because the finding is dictated by the state, it's not something we have any wiggle room in my mind. However, that said, enhanced landscaping. I'm wondering if the fourth space that's adjacent to your planted area, that would be the one at the top of the screen that has an octagon whose numbers I can't read in it. That was one that reduced the landscaping in this proposal. Right. And if the one on the most distal end closest to the landscape peninsula at the driveway, if those two spaces, instead of the green arrow being adjacent to the entry, if the green arrow was three spaces down, so now you have the two symmetrical spaces at the ends, if they were paved with San Francisco cobbles, or San Francisco granite curbs, the way we had a residential project on, hmm, somewhere in Los Altos, which I can't remember, and it was hmm, planted with something between the cracks that someone could drive on if it was the rush hour period. I believe that I could, I could look at that and say that is a landscaping element. It's a decorative element that you could drive on. And it has to be extremely high quality, in my opinion, in order to make that threshold. But, which means it's not stamped concrete. Let me make that clear. But if it was high end and it was a design element in the landscaping plan that coincidentally during rush time could be, someone could drive on it, I would be, I would see this as a compliant project. I don't know if staff would, but I would, because then those two spaces that 40 by 20, that 20 by 20, 400 square feet would meet the 50% landscape. It isn't if those, only those two spaces which are reducing it below the level. So if those two spaces were paved but landscape feature, they would meet the letter of the requirement and no variance would be required. And so that would be what I would say. I cannot make the third finding. This is not a unique circumstance that meets the threshold, in my opinion, from the state mandate. However, I see an opportunity for someone to do decorative alternative paving in two of the spaces, and I would do it symmetrically because I'm an architect and I would do that. And if no one parked on the time, most of the time, fine. But if at the peak times you had a little sign at the nose that said, park here, <laughs> And then when the busy season was over, you took that sign down. You're fine with me. That's my comment. So I'm going to basically agree with Phoebe's comments. Um, and as the, you gathered from my questions, I I'm, I'm just have a tough time finding a basis for granting the variance. But I also think that if there's a way of increasing the supply of parking, that's a win-win situation. So if what Phoebe is suggesting um, passes muster, 
um, with, with staff, staff. Uh, and the applicant, then I would certainly be in favor of that as a win-win alternative. So maybe, David, I should ask you, does that pass muster with staff? Yeah, I think it's an interesting idea. The um, and and there's there's different qualities of it. With Grass Creek is sort of the lower <coughs> end of it, and that's really only for fire lanes or something. Because if it's used with any frequency, it just looks bad, it gets worn out, and um, and so. But there are there are I've I've been seeing more and more sophisticated paving patterns where, and this is coming in terms of stormwater runoff management mm -hmm. where they're using parking spaces and they're paved in a semi-porous way and sometimes landscaped with low things that are sort of oil tolerant and mm -hmm. and and they do it sort of in the center of some of the spaces so it it really isn't disturbed when somebody parks uh, and is and is somewhat decorative so I think if it's designed right and I I think their their landscape architect, I'm sure, has something in his quiver. Um, so I, I'm open to it. I, okay. I, and, and, and so in my mind, though, you know, whether two spaces would do it, because if you're going to design it in a way that you can actually drive on it, mm -hmm. um, I mean, unless you're willing to consider the decorative paving aspect as part of the landscape. That's what I was which suggesting. I'm, which I'm, I'm willing to do. In I this. mean, if I saw San Francisco cobbles, I find that decorative in itself. Yeah. And if yeah. it didn't have, if it had the normal planting in the front, this is why we're asking if staff could support that. Yeah, and I think it's within their, their landscape concept, it allowed the water, I mean, they have the detention areas near where the sign is, and, and I think they could very, I think, I think it would be uh, easily redesigned. Okay. Um, so, I, I, I have to agree with uh, Phoebe and John, um, um, but my suggestion would be that all of the front spaces have a design built in, and I thought your comment about having the plantings be in the center of the space so that the car's tires don't actually run over the planting, but there could be uh, a strip a decorative strip of planting that went on, on our picture would go vertically up the picture in the middle of the space and then um, horizontal plantings um, in these that went horizontally in each space. Um, I, I'm only making a suggestion. Rather than just have two spaces singled out for this, I think having it be continuous along the front, um, I, I, I have to agree that I, I, I cannot make the third finding, but um, I think there should be a way if we enhanced um, the landscaping in the front, I, th I think I could certainly support that. I, my only comment would be, though, that I think we need to, um, it can't be just those two spaces. I think it, it, we need to work on all of the parking spaces, and I think Phoebe had a good idea. We just need to expand that on, on that idea. But it's something, Ken, that if we agree on direction, we can let staff work with the applicant on? Yes. I, you know, maybe we need to make a little pencil sketch of what I'm talking about. I'm not sure I'm making myself clear, but... I, I think I understand what you're talking about. And using I, 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 just, so I think it would look weird just to have two spaces singled out as some kind of special planted spaces. And I, I think... Um, since the applicant has expressed a willingness to try to work with the city in order to have this exception made, I think um, we can push it a little bit. So, are you, are you yeah, I'm done. So I, I agree with everything that's been said, and and what that translates, in my mind, is a rejection of the variance, yes. and that means that we're suggesting to them that they need to get in compliance, and that's where I would stop. I think we've given them three possible suggestions. One was the um, enhanced paving of the driveway that goes to El Camino. Another was to dedicate the two spots on either end to um, enhanced paving. 
an alternative is rather than do two spots, do maybe a quarter of all eight spots. Correct. Which at the end results in the same square footage. Exactly. But the beauty of these solutions is they can do whatever they want, and okay. it shouldn't be dictated by us. We're simply rejecting the variance, and then they have to find a way to get in compliance, and maybe they'll come up with another solution that they will work out with staff, but it's not for us because it's out of our hands to tell them how to be in compliance when they come up with that sort of solution. So motion to deny variance application 14V09. All in favor? Subject to the findings. Or do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. With the direction that we think the applicant can comply creatively because staff has said that enhanced paving in some way will allow him to will allow them to meet the requirement and meet their own requirements at the same time. Is that agreeable, David? Yes. This is David. All right. Great. Thank you. That was helpful. Right. Good. Moving on. Any reports and comments? Um, I was at city council meeting yesterday. Uh, the Giants scored on the eighth. It's a now report. tied. <laughs> so you want to talk? I, I can well, talk about Well, John should talk first because his meeting came first, and then we'll do the second one. Okay. So I, I happen to be at the study session to talk about downtown parking. The downtown, um, um, the, the Chamber of Commerce had previously forward to the city and staff a presentation on um, a process for moving forward with a parking structure and 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 a and a, a group to you know define exactly where it was and figure out cost and figure out how it was going to get financed and all those pieces and that's what the chamber was recommending staff uh, <coughs> provided their input and then there was public comment um, there was no resolution. Um, 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 the mayor did not uh, have a chance because of time limitations to give her comments. Um, uh, the others split two to two. Two were in favor of proceeding with the plan. Two were in favor of doing a visioning process or a specific plan for downtown prior to uh, moving forward with with a with a downtown parking structure or a process to get to a downtown parking structure um, and there was at least at some tacit recognition that that would materially slow down the timing and process of getting a parking structure and there was a huge turnout I mean the whole the the building was full when I came in so it was very well attended um, following that, I attended the City Council meeting immediately following. The discussion items that are relevant to us was the mixed-use building at 897 North San Antonio Road was approved 3-2. The mayor thought that it didn't meet the design, the level of quality of design that she hoped to see, but the project was approved nonetheless. Um, the other thing of interest to us was that the parking requirements for medical office uses. There's now a, the council voted to adopt an, a moratorium to allow staff to come up with information for them to allow them to analyze whether and how the zoning code should be modified relative to medical office uses. And I believe the most um, cogent comment was made by someone who said this is not something they have to reinvent the wheel for. Hanf has been doing studies on it, and many other cities have already adapted their code to reflect the fact that certain medical office uses are more intense for parking than others. And so I believe that staff was directed to go and do something about it. And those were the two comments. This was a meeting that lasted till 1130 at night, and they didn't get through the agenda anyway. So what, is, what does that mean in moratorium? They won't they review won't. projects that are medical buildings? that medical office use will be on hold for any new projects coming through pending the zoning code being modified or left on its own after council gets their information. Are there any on hold because of that um, moratorium that are waiting? No. For? Okay. Um, the, but the 
897 San Antonio, for example, was barred from medical office use. Mm -hmm. It is it has to have Specifically regular office use. condition for that. I'm it's sorry. Thank you, David. And so effectively, if if someone wants to convert an office building into a medical office building, I can't allow that until the moratorium has run its course. Um, uh, so, so really, um, existing medical office uses can turn over and add uh, uh, use doctors and whatever to them. That's fine. It's really just the new something that would create a new parking demand. We could approve. Okay. Any other future agenda items? I have a future agenda item. Um, but first is a, is a question for David. Is this project planning to come before us, David? This is the Boulanger. The Boulanger. Uh, eventually. Uh, um, uh, let me think about this. This is going historical commission. And it was supposed it, to go to them, and it, and it didn't. And, and so they have to go. They went on a study session to the historical commission. They'd have to go back to the historical commission to, to have a permit, because this is a, a, a landmark building. But... Um, uh, yeah, they're not adding um, any square footage, so it's an administrative level review. Okay, and I, so I would like to propose an agenda item that we talk and understand at what level projects come to planning because there have been a number of significant remodels downtown without them coming to PTC choices of materials which are not necessarily typical in downtown and I'd like to understand how staff is looking at that and see if we are all in concurrence on the yeah, process. I, mean, I can answer the question now. I mean the zoning code is very d clear. If, if, if they're adding on more than 500 square feet of commercial or multifamily building area it's planning and transportation commission and city council review. Even if the building is completely, is essentially torn down and reskinned. Um, no, if a building is torn down and rebuilt, well, that would be a new building. Well, but, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of the facelift. Yeah, no, yeah. facelift is administrative. Okay. Um, what building are you thinking? Well, we, we had Linden Tree, we had the museum building, mm -hmm. we had another third building on State Street, and what we have now is another building with a, with a, a, a actually historic landmark building in, in, on Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, I, for one, would like to discuss, you know, where that fits and whether uh, there's basis for making some changes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that so the future agenda item would be to discuss the thresholds for commission level review. Right, and uh, I, and I and I like to get that scheduled sooner rather than later because it seems to me that in general we we are very light on agenda items. Yeah, we've got um, your our our first meeting in November. We do not have an item, so we could put that on there. Now, or if you want a break, we, uh, the, we have two items scheduled for the second um, meeting in November. Um, and, uh, I think I'd rather, personally, I would rather that you piggybacked onto agenda we already have than to have a meeting only for that because it seems more time efficient. Mm -hmm. As long as we don't have five items already on um, the agenda. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what we have on that agenda. We have a subdivision. Uh, it's a lot split uh, on J. Uh, mm. We have, um, which is code compliant, um, but but discretionary nonetheless. Uh, and uh, and we potentially have 999 Fremont. November. If okay. Their their plans are coming together, and and so. We so that would be the date, the 20th, we're looking at there? Uh, the first one would be the 6th of November, and the second one would be the, be the 20th. Okay. Well, we, we have to be in, we, we need three commissioners to agree that it's something we want to agendize. I can support that being agendized. 
Yes, the twentieth would be yeah. that day. I'm, I'm, I think that's appropriate for agenda. So there are three of us. But I'd like to see it on on piggybacking or yes. something that's already on the. Let's not do a special so, meeting for so it. So we have. Exactly. So we One, have. Two, three. We have the interest to. We do. Uh, okay. So. Great. Or the twentieth. Great. All right. Okay. We'll do. Adjourned. Yay. Thank you. All right. How are they doing? Three, three. Okay. <laughs> Did we have a minute?